what is going on you guys my name is Takeshi Tor I am back with another Dragon Ball Z video and as far as the content that I'm gonna be creating today I'm gonna be addressing top five useless transformations in the series and if you guys are new to the channel go ahead subscribe favorite make sure you share it with other people that want to listen to me and just if you guys are interested in Dragon Ball if you guys are new go ahead make sure you guys subscribe and make sure you click that notification bell as well so that way you guys don't miss a beat now on to the video so basically our video is going to be about today top five useless transformations in the series and there has been a lot of good ones you know we've had super saiyan we've had super saiyan god you know we've had so many good transformations in the series but as we know there are some transformations that aren't, aren't as good as other ones now remember this is my opinion and I just want to address that. This is my opinion about these transformations and why I don't prefer them. But I know a lot of people will strongly agree and may disagree. But I just really wanted to make sure that you guys understand that and give you the facts also. Why these transformations to me are the top five useless transformations in the series. And I also want to make sure before we start that I will be counting Dragon Ball transformations from movies and GT. Even though GT and the movies aren't specifically canon, we're going to also include transformations from there because at the end of the day, transformations are transformations. Dragon Ball is Dragon Ball. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started to number five. Okay, guys, so at number five, we have Super Saiyan Blue. Now, I already know that a lot of people think I'm going to be crazy for putting Super Saiyan Blue even on the list to begin with, but I understand that you know the form has blue hair you know Goku has amazing power you know his speed is incredible and it's a pretty decent form and it's very strong and powerful in the Dragon Ball Super series but if you really dive deeper into this transformation I'm gonna explain to you why I think it's useless and to start off with this do we can we all agree about the fact that Super Saiyan Blue had probably one of the worst names from the beginning I mean the name in the beginning was called Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. I mean, what kind of name is that? I mean, really. I mean, that name is just really confusing. And it's just, they should have, to be honest with you, they really should have just said Super Saiyan Blue from the start. So that's one specific reason why the the transformation from, from the start isn't starting off too hot. Another reason why I think Super Saiyan Blue is probably u useless also is because... I also want to explain the point of the transformation. The basic point of this transformation is that the form pushes the user's power, strength, and speed to new heights beyond the previous Super Saiyan levels, which would be Super Saiyan God, as well as expressing and able to control key energy. And it is indeed stronger than the Super Saiyan God transformation with the red hair. Although this transformation may be strong, it lacks speed at times and uses great stamina so this transformation does have a lot of power but it does still lack the fact that this form uses a lot of energy and is very stressful on the body and to top it all off the thing about this transformation is that it just looks like regular old super saiyan the only difference is, is that his hair is blue i mean the creativity behind this form isn't the best and due to the fact that this transformation has been abused and overused in the series. I mean, if you think about it, Super Saiyan Blue Goku was actually using his Super Saiyan Blue energy against Krillin on top of a roof in the series. And if you don't tell me that that's actually not fun and just the fact that, that he actually used Super Saiyan Blue against him. And we all know this. We all know that Goku in his base form can actually punch curl in one hit and, and call it a day but obviously this form is totally overused in the series and misunderstood and that's why i have super saiyan blue on the list hopefully you guys understand what i'm coming from i know most people are probably going to argue with me and dislike the video and probably say something in the comment section which is fine but i just want you under, uh, to understand why there's reasons why this form could be useless moving forward Alright, so at number 4, we have the Super Giant form, also known as Giant Piccolo. Both names can be used for this transformation. Um, 
I know a lot of people are going to be confused about this transformation because I know a lot of people are going to say, well, if you can put giant, giant Piccolo on this list, why can't you put the Ozaru transformation on here? Well, to, to point this out, the Ozaru transformation was actually useful and it had more benefits than actually this transformation did. And due to the fact the Ozaru transformation, also known as the Great Ape transformation for the people who don't know, um, that transformation increases your strength 10 times and it actually increases your um, speed as well. So I'm not, that's why I don't actually have the Great Ape transformation even on the list. But moving on from that, Giant Piccolo comes in at number 4 on my list. And the reason why I say this is because it's not like the Azaro transformation where it's like a dr dr drastic increase to like a Saiyan's power level and thus they're not as large as a disadvantage. With Piccolo, it's making him many times larger than he is, thus easier to hit, and he's a lot more vulnerable in this state, and we saw this in the Dragon Ball World Tournament against Goku, where Goku pretty much was able to defeat him easily because of the fact that Piccolo, even though he was giant, had lack of speed, strength didn't increase that much, and he was way more vulnerable to being attacked, and as a result, that's actually why he even lost the World Tournament to begin with. But this is why Giant Piccolo is on the list. And we don't really even see this transformation until like the Lord Slug movie. Which was pretty much useless as well because he ended up losing to Goku anyway. But yeah, that's why Giant Piccolo is on the list. Transformation hasn't returned and I'm pretty sure it won't be returning soon. It is best that this transformation is long forgotten in the series. Alright, so number 3 on our top 5 worst transformations we have the ascended saiyan also known as the super saiyan grade 3 transformation or you can say ascended super saiyan it does not make a difference they're both the same name now this man this this just you know i don't even know what to say about this transformation this this transformation is just it's it's one of the most useless transformations by far i mean while the super saiyan grade 3 does consume a, a great amount of stamina probably more than any Super Saiyan form in the series. Its outrageous power increase is really good, but the decrease of the speed is bad. So it has great power and great strength, but it lacks in speed. And we see this in the series right in the beginning of the Cell Saga. We see that once Cell, or Imperfect Cell, absorbs Android 17 and becomes semi-perfect, Goku's like, hey guys, we're not strong enough to, you know, beat Cell in the current state that we're in. Trunks and Vegeta proceed to train in the hyperbolic time chamber. And one day equals one year in there, so they got a lot of training in there. They ended up coming out, and they were able to ascend beyond regular old Super Saiyan. And as a result, it seemed in hindsight that the form was, well, it was doing good. I mean, he was, I mean, Vegeta was doing really well against, uh, so, until, you know, basically so, um, absorb Android 18, and that was pretty much the end of that, and Vegeta's, um, long live of glory pretty much ended, and Trunks stepped up to the plate and ended up going to the grade 3 of the Ascended Super Saiyan form, and as a result, he was frustrated and couldn't figure out why he couldn't hit Cell, and Cell pretty much told him that you may have increased your power, but your speed lacks, and even Cell demonstrated trunks to by himself that he was actually able to do the same thing trunks did he was able to bulk up his muscles but it still lacks of speed and that's why this saiyan transformation is not good at all it is very useless and we also see goku do it in the hyperbolic time chamber as well with gohan and gohan was like oh wow you can defeat cell but goku said and stated the exact same thing that cell said if i can't hit my opponent why does it matter if I have all this strength with all these bulky muscles, and in hindsight, bulky muscle means, hey, I got these muscles, I can beat anyone, right? Well, not exactly. You see, the form is very strong with power, and the stamina is pretty decent when it comes to this form, but the lack of speed is the problem with this form, and to be honest, it pretty much ruins the form, and it's pretty much useless, and that's why we haven't really even seen this form at all, and the only time we did see it was in Dragon Ball Super, when Future Trunks came back and actually fought Vegeta, but Trunks only went into that form, so that way he can actually trick Vegeta into thinking that he, that, you know, he actually uses that form on a regular basis, but doesn't. So that's why Ascended Saiyan 
should be never again be brought back into the series and why it should have never really existed in the first place. Alright guys, so at number 2 we have Fall Super Saiyan. Now Fall Super Saiyan is a very weird transformation. I mean this transformation seems like half Saiyan and the other half is not Super Saiyan at all. And that's pretty much what this form is. It's it's why it's called a Fall Super Saiyan. It's half Super Saiyan and the other half is just basically whatever it is. It's not it doesn't have Super Saiyan power basically. So Fall Super Saiyan is pretty much not a Super Saiyan, but it almost feels like it's one. And that right there just already proves to you why this transformation does not make any sense and it's completely useless. I mean, Fall Super Saiyan Goku did triumph over Lord Slug during the battle against him. Goku's strength began to rise quickly. One way to put it is that the Fall Super Saiyan transformation occurs when a Saiyan has required physical power, but lacks required men the mental strife to, to transform into the next level, which is Super Saiyan, which is pretty much what happened. Goku had the ability to do it, he just didn't have the mental, you know, capability of the anger that he had to transform into the upper level, which is Super Saiyan. He had the power to, but he just wasn't able to do it, and as a result, we get the false Super Saiyan transformation, which usually defeated the word Slug, and that was the end of the movie. Now, it took place right around the Ginyu Saga. And Goku's power level was probably around 90,000 to 180,000. 180, Lord Slug was probably just as strong as Piccolo when after he fused the nail. So uh, if I had to say uh, how strong uh, Fall Super Saiyan Goku was, he at least had to be over 1 million as far as his power level in that transformation. But we clearly see that this transformation has more flaws than it has any good. And we know this just because of the simple fact that this transformation hasn't even been brought back into the series. And also, this is a transformation in a movie, so it is not an actual canon transformation. So we can technically say this transformation doesn't exist, but it was brought into the movie, and as a result, we don't really ever see it again. And it's probably for the best that we don't see this transformation. Super Saiyan was just way better, but as far as power and skill wise but that's why we don't see false super saiyan again and won't see it again anytime soon and it was just a waste of an idea all right guys so for the last one in the top five for the most useless transformations in dragon ball i have goku super saiyan 3 transformation as one of the most useless transformations in the Dragon Ball Z series. Now you could argue Fall Super Saiyan deserves to take the number one spot, but hey, I did. I was able to do my facts, and I was able to address which ones I thought were the most useless, and I thought, hey, Super Saiyan 3 deserves to be that number one spot. Now I'm gonna give you a specific reason why Super Saiyan 3 Goku is probably one of the most useless transformations in the Dragon Ball Z series. So we saw this transformation in the Buu Saga, and it was probably one of Goku's best moments when he was fighting uh, Majin Buu. But it was unfortunately ruined by Dragon Ball Super. And also to do with the fact that Super Saiyan 3 was ruined in the same arc it pretty much started in. It was always a terrible front form excuse me, to begin with. It drains way too much power and only usable for a short amount of time. So basically the form is only good for a short period of time. And it's not made for long, dragged out battles, which can be an issue because most of the time, Dragon Ball Z fights don't end one, two, three. They usually last a pretty long time. And when you need some, and you're facing someone powerful, you need a transformation that's able to get the job done. And Super Saiyan three just doesn't do that. Although I will say this about Super Saiyan three, it isn't useless if fights aren't being dragged out with no God form optional. It's a 4 time multiplier over Super Saiyan 2, but the power and stamina ratio is just really bad. I mean, this form has a lot of issues, being due to the fact that the stamina is bad. Yes, you get more power, but the speed is not really good, and he moves a lot slower than Super Saiyan 2. And just to do the fact also, we don't really see this form a lot. I mean, we see it in the Janimba movie, and we see it the first time against Majin Buu, but the reason why he, Goku doesn't really use this form is because of the stress on the body. See, when he was fighting against Majin Buu, he even knew himself that his energy was draining fast and he didn't have much time. What he, mean, but what he meant by that was that 
this transformation is so stressful that the human body can only handle so much. But he was able to get this transformation because in, in the other world where he was dead for seven years, he was able to keep his body and train over those seven years. Because when you're dead, you don't have that stress. So he was able to train and get that transformation because he didn't have to deal with the stress. Whereas the other Z fighters like Vegeta and Gohan, they weren't able to get that Super Saiyan 3 transformation because of the amount of stress it put on the body. And, they were, and Vegeta was only able to get Super Saiyan 2. Now that being said, Super Saiyan 3 did pretty decent against Kid Buu, but after one full power Kamehameha against Kid Buu, we see Goku get on his knees and just pretty much he's out of breath. I mean, the man, he, he can't fight anymore. He lost all his energy because that's what the transformation does. Super Saiyan 3 uses a lot of uh, energy and the stamina and power ratio, once again, is probably one of the worst out of any transformation because of the amount of stamina that it has to use. And the only character we actually see you Super Saiyan 3 besides Goku is actually Gotenks. And besides Gotenks, we don't really see him or Goku really use that transformation because it is just really hard on the body. And the only time we did see it in Dragon Ball Super was when he was using it against the Tournament of Power and he wanted to demonstrate, you know, uh, Kale and uh, Khalifa basically, hey, you can achieve his power, but, you know, he only used it for like a minute and that was it. That basically tells you that this transformation is pretty much not good. But that being said, the transformation is decent, but at times, most of the time, it is just not a good form. With that being said, I have Super Saiyan 3 on my number one list, including the rest of the transformations. And this is my top five useless transformations video. Um, I hope you guys really like this video. If you guys are new, go ahead, subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss a beat. And if there's anyone out there that's new to Dragon Ball and wants to share this video with other people, just make sure you do that and to let them know, hey, Takeshi Tore has some good content that he wants to show. With that being said, I'll see you guys later. My name is Takeshi Tore, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.